What is a spray? A spray is a cloud of small droplets of liquid moving in the air. Think about perfume, for example. When you push the cap of a perfume bottle, some liquid is sucked up into the tube and pushed through a small hole at high speed. When the liquid is ejected into the air, it breaks into a bunch of tiny droplets. Because the droplets are so small, they can spread out evenly on your body and evaporate, leaving behind just the nice smell. But here's something you might find surprising. Did you know that liquid fuel enters an engine a lot like perfume? Lots of vehicles have engines that burn liquid fuel. However, liquid fuel can't be burned directly. The fuel has to evaporate into vapor first, and then that vapor can be burned. If you put gasoline into a bucket and left it uncovered, the liquid would slowly turn into vapor but not very efficiently, because only a small portion of the liquid is actually touching the air. More contact with air means faster evaporation. So, like a perfume bottle, the fuel injector in engines turns the liquid fuel into a spray. The tiny fuel droplets have a lot more surface area, so they can easily evaporate into a vapor that can be burned. Have you ever seen clouds of dark smoke coming from tractors or 18-wheelers? Forming a finer spray will help the fuel burn more efficiently, which will generate higher engine power and produce less pollution. But how exactly does the fuel injector in an engine turn liquid fuel into a spray? Let's zoom in and take a closer look. When the fuel injector makes a spray, the liquid fuel is pushed out through a small hole, forming a cylindrical liquid jet. As the fast-moving liquid hits the air, it will break into liquid sheets. The liquid sheets disintegrate into long, thin liquid filaments. Finally, the filaments stretch out until they break into a bunch of tiny droplets. Now we have a spray. Let's talk about the physics behind why this happens. Two physical forces control what happens to the liquid jet, inertia and surface tension. When a liquid jet is moving much faster than the gas around it, the inertia force tends to tear the liquid apart. Imagine throwing a bunch of tennis balls into the air together. They'll tend to spread out and separate apart. However, there is an interesting physical property that tends to hold liquid together. You know what it is, surface tension. Surface tension is a force that works only on the surface between the liquid and the air, and it is always tangential to the surface. While inertia tries to disintegrate the liquid jet, surface tension tries to hold it together. Surface tension is kind of like putting all the tennis balls into a bag. If you throw the balls inside the bag, the balls will remain together instead of spreading out. The competition between inertia force and surface tension is measured by a parameter called the Weber number, named after the German scientist Moritz Weber. When the Weber number is large, the inertia force wins over surface tension and the jet will break. The higher the Weber number, the smaller the droplets will be. The process of forming a spray is complex, but it's also really tiny. The injector hole in a gasoline direct injection engine is only 150 microns across. That's about the diameter of a single human hair. Not surprisingly, this presents a huge challenge for engineers who want to study spray formation and visualize exactly how the process works. The physical processes we talked about earlier are governed by a set of mathematical equations called the Navier-Stokes equations. By solving those equations, we can predict how the spray will form. The challenge is that the Navier-Stokes equations are very complex and cannot be solved with just paper and pencil. That's where computer simulation comes in. To find the solution of the equations, we need to divide the spatial domain into many small subdomains 
called computational cells. And then we can find the approximate solutions in each cell. The computational cells are like pixels of a picture. The smaller the pixel size, the better the picture looks. Similarly, the smaller the computational cells, the more accurate the computer simulation. The problem is, to accurately simulate a spray, we need many, many computational cells. If you use a laptop computer, it would take years to simulate a spray in high-level detail. That's way too long. That's why researchers use supercomputers, where tens of thousands of computer processors work together to speed up the job. Computer simulation is now a crucial tool for solving all kinds of engineering problems, not just spray formation. And anyone can do it. People with physical limitations might not be able to lift up a heavy engine, but they can still use advanced simulation tools and supercomputers to improve the engine's design. Becoming an engineer is possible for people of all shapes, sizes, and abilities. <laughs>